the center of the zone, a place where many wish to go, but which is defended like holy ground by the fanatics of the monolith faction, who act as the main late game antagonists in every game of the Stalker trilogy. But how powerful, how large is this mysterious faction really? Hello Stalkers, and welcome to the Anomalous Dugout. Today, we will find out a part of the answer by simply counting all the monolithians from the games. Before you can encounter real monolith stalkers, a few corpses of the faction can be found. I may have missed some, but I was able to count two in the Great Swamps and one in the Cordon. The first living monolith forces you will encounter in the army warehouses. There are four veterans near the crashed chopper, and then another squad of five guarding the road to the radar. There are also some corpses in the Bloodsucker village, apparently six of them. Before we move on to more living monolithians, we can see four of them dead in the red forest, including two fresh corpses in scientific and exoskeleton suits. Next up, we go to Limansk. The first intersection is defended by five veterans, while the second intersection is held by three soldiers on the street, one on the balcony, another in the building, and two pairs behind windows from each side of the road. Then the next ambush takes place in the square, where we have a squad of four coming out of a cellar, and at least four snipers and six shooters behind windows. After that, there is the construction site, which is the monolith stronghold in the city. It is defended by a total of 20 hardened fanatics. Finally, a last ambush is set up in front of the Radio Wave Institute by a group of five veterans, including one sniper. After they fail to stop Clear Sky in Limansk, the monolith make their last defense in the deserted hospital. We first encounter two experts in exoskeletons, one with a sniper rifle and the other with a machine gun. After they're defeated, two pairs of soldiers await the intruders, and fresh reinforcements will come from the other side of the building, in the form of four squads of three men. Further in the hospital, we have two soldiers keeping watch on the entrance, two others defending the staircases, plus two hiding near side doors. They will be quickly backed up by a first squad of three men on the first floor. After the military chopper is destroyed, two other three men squads arrive, one on the ground floor and one on the first floor. Then comes a sequence where monolith soldiers seem to spawn until the clear sky squad blocks the entrances, so their number varies. There is at least one machine gunner, three dudes on the balcony, one sniper with an exoskeleton along with a veteran, one guy on the broken roof, and some reinforcements jumping down from the first floor. When the way is cleared, a four-man squad will appear from behind. Finally, the power plant. Clear sky stalkers are battling on ground level with a group of monolithians in scientific suits. In the meantime, Strelok kills two of them on the pipeline. But the last ones? Scar has to do it himself. So let's count them in the heat of the action. Okay, so that's already two and a third one. Then others will spawn behind. So that's five. And others as well. So that's six, seven and eight. Then you can take the teleporter and on the pipeline another one will spawn behind you. So that's nine of them. And on this roof there are a lot. So ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, 19, 20, and finally 21. Then we get to the other pipeline, and that's 22 and 23. 
24, 25, 26, and 27. And then we have two here. So up to 29. And here are the last two. So that's 31 more. Monolith stalkers are teased very early in the game, as the corpses of four of them can be found in a crashed death truck in the cordon. Then, the Yentar factory is also full of dead monolith bodies. There are two at the entrance, five near the BTR, one in the building and one in the stairs leading to the lab. And the laboratory X-16 itself contains eight more corpses plus one in the tunnels below Yentor. But as usual, the first living monolith troops you will see in the army warehouses. Upon approaching the barrier, it will be attacked by three solid waves of fanatics, for a total of 17 soldiers. The area also features a lot of dead monolith stalkers in the Bloodsucker village. Among the eight bodies, Two seem to be the same as those in Clear Sky. Moving on north, the entrance of the Red Forest is guarded by a sentry and three other monolithians near the campfire. Further down the road, a lone patrolling dude is overwatched by a sniper, and a three-man squad is located near the tank, covered by another sniper. From this point on, the monoliths are setting up ambushes. The first ambush takes place near the BTR, where three soldiers plus a sniper are waiting. After that, there are three guards among the rocks on the right side of the road, and close by, the second ambush, with an RPG soldier, a sniper, and four regular shooters. If you take the road that goes north, you will encounter two patrolling monolithians, and then an outpost guarded by five soldiers plus an exoskeleton master. If you take the other road, there will be another ambush consisting of four soldiers and a sniper. And after the next crossroads, an ambush again with five dudes and a sniper. On the road to Pripyat, there are two patrolling soldiers and four other guards near the gate. But we don't go to Pripyat just yet, we continue uphill to the Scorcher. On the slope, a total of five monolithians are hiding behind barrels. Then we arrive at the main base, which has two snipers' towers, a sniper on the corner, one on the crane structure, and another one atop of one of the antennas. At the entrance of the complex we have three guards, and inside two patrolling guys plus a total of four defenders. Inside the tunnel leading to the lab, three others fanatics await. When you first enter the laboratory, it is empty of monolith fighters. However, they will try to stop you from coming back. There are two guards near the tanks, then three in the large room, quickly backed up by a duo of exoskeleton experts. Another expert duo roams the corridors, while four sentries keep watch. Then we have two dudes in the staircase, and at the top, two experts and three soldiers. Further down there will be three guards in the tanks room, two experts again, and three remaining monolithians before the transition. After you exit the lab, two squads of four men will arrive to try to stop the military from capturing the area, but they usually fail. At the first intersection, two monolith soldiers are hiding on the right street, while another one waits on the destroyed building on the left. After that, the next four buildings on the main street, two on each side, all have one shooter on the roof and one behind the window. At the end of the street, two fighters are behind the pipes, one near the bus stops, and two more on the other side of the road. Then there are two shooters inside the first floor of the school. Another ambush is set up in the underground car park, with five monolithians awaiting in the dark. 
Next up is the hotel. In front of the building, a scout is patrolling while an expert holds the entrance. And there is a sniper with a Gauss rifle on the roof. Two other snipers with Gauss rifles cover the street on the right of the hotel. And in this street you have one sentry, plus another dude on the balcony at the back of the building. In the center of the city, three guards keep watch on the square, with two others in the building on the right, and two patrolling the nearby street. Further, we have the Palace of Culture, the main base of the monolith. At the left, there is a side building with five soldiers inside and an RPG on the roof. Then, at the front of the main building, two snipers on the balcony and one sentry on each side of the entrance. Inside the left section of the base, one dude at a corner and another one covering the side street from a window. Inside the right section of the base, a duo of guards, one guy in the courtyard, one at the back near the ferris wheel and one RPG on the roof. The back entrance of the building is defended by three experts in exoskeletons. Inside the main room, five fanatics are praying to the monolith, while two others guard the entrance of the basement, in which the monolith leader Charon is located. After this base, we have one Gauss sniper covering the amusement park, another one on the left of the stadium, and three experts with RPGs defending the transition to the power plant. Now we get to the CNPP, and because of the military attack, the imminent blowout and the hugeness of the area, the results here might be inaccurate. Anyway, we have three snipers on the way to the power plant, then four guards at the main gate. At the top of the turbine hall, a Gauss sniper another one on the building just in front, and two RPGs just below that. Then a squad of around five men, near the electricity towers and on the other side of the road. Another squad is located a bit further, near the train carts. Between the two buildings in front of the turbine hall, we have two other RPG wielders, and on top of the second building, two Gauss snipers. Finally, at the entrance of the sarcophagus, we find the platoon of six experts in exoskeletons. But before going further, let's rewind back and take a look at all those monolith corpses. The road to the CNPP is littered with a total 21 dead monolith bodies, remaining from the intense fighting between the defenders of the monolith and a column of military vehicles. The area near the gate has five more corpses, and surprisingly the living monolithians don't seem to care. Then another battle scene features 18 bodies, a testimony of the previous bloody attempts to capture the center of the zone by the army. Speaking of which, the military camp is surrounded by the corpses of 13 monolith soldiers. Last but not least, there are 10 dead fanatics around the entrance of the sarcophagus. So, we made it to the sarcophagus. There is a Gauss sniper covering the angle of the first corridors. Then, we have two patrolling experts in the next hallway, and at the very end of it, two others sitting in complete darkness. One guard sits next to the hole in the wall, and in the next room, five sentries stand ready, while four others pray to the monolith. After that, another corridor with two experts, and a staircase with a total of three soldiers. Then we have the hallway that goes around the reactor, which is roamed by a total of nine monolith warriors. If you resist the temptation to go to the monolith and go to the secret door instead, a total of eight experts in exoskeletons will spawn with a teleporter at the other end of the corridor. Next up is the secret monolith control center, which is defended by a large group of 28 fighters. 
Most of them roam around in the area, but there are also at least three guys hiding in corners and three snipers covering the long hallways with their Gauss rifles. And at the end, the control room itself is defended by a squad of five elite monolithans. As soon as you exit the sarcophagus, three exoskeleton guards will spawn. In this small area next to the sarcophagus, a lot of dead monolith stalkers lay around. I was able to count 15 bodies, plus 5 devastated campfires, for a total of 31 corpses. After that, two gauss snipers and an RPG wielder are covering the roofs. Up the ladder, three other soldiers, and four others on the next rooftop. Atop of an inaccessible building just below you, another scene of massacre near a military chopper, with the remains of ten former monolith stalkers. Then on the pipeline, two monolithians plus an expert spawning in your face. On the nearby roof, two gauss snipers, an RPG and a squad of five more men. You then teleport to the top of the sarcophagus itself, and two dudes with RPGs will arrive further down to shoot you up there. And near the exhaust tower, two experts guarding the next teleporter. Another pipeline with an RPG soldier, and three guys shooting from the lower pipeline, including another RPG. Then two gauss snipers near the parabolic antennas, and three experts on nearby rooftops. When you arrive near the tallest tower, two exoskeleton warriors arrive at the top of this building to shoot down at you, and a Gauss rifle sniper overlooks the scene. After that, there are three expert soldiers near the crane, and another one a bit further. Next up is the monolith storage camp, which is defended by a squad of four men. Then we have a rooftop with three guards, but where five other monolithians will spawn without warning. Before moving on, let's quickly mention two corpses that are located on the radioactive ground level, near the place where Clear Sky battled the monolith faction in the previous game. That's it, you've made it to the very last area, where there are three experts covered by two gauss gunners and an RPG. While you advance, three other waves of three men will teleport in, and when you are almost at the other side of the building, an RPG will spawn right behind you. Finally, at the top of the ladder awaits the last challenge. Five monolith masters teleporting at the same time, in a last effort to defend the sea consciousness. The first monolith troops you will encounter in Jupiter, but those six men led by Strider are not hostile, as they lost their link to the monolith. However, real monolith forces will try to stop you in the Pripyat underpass. A first group of six randomly equipped fighters spawns when the generator is turned on. Then three snipers and four fighters arrive as the exit door is opened. The remaining monolith army is located in Pripyat. First, the ambush at the hospital involves three sacrificial men, and then 15 warriors including a number of snipers, and their leader, a monolith preacher wielding a gauss rifle. After that, we attack the bookstore. The entrance is guarded by five soldiers, then we have one in a corner, one in the hallway, and five more praying to their now silent monolith. The next area occupied by the faction is the Jubilee Service Center. The top three floors are defended by a total of 12 monolith troopers, grouped in squads of two. Then is the Prometheus Theater, which has a guard roaming around and two men near the campfire. This is the first of the only two instances in Call of Pulpiat 
where I was able to see a monolith exoskeleton. The last monolith base is the river port. One building has a lone sentry and five men around the fire. The other building has two guards, a sniper on the tower and a praying master. Finally, the monolith makes a desperate attempt to stop the military survivors from being evacuated. The battle is overseen by two snipers on apartment buildings and two more sharpshooters on the roof of the Prometheus Theater. Below those, two squads of two men near the entrances. On the other side of the area, two fighters are close by and two others a bit further near a fallen tree. Then, two squads coming from the river port, including a possibly random exoskeleton user for a total of around seven monolith warriors. When the military makes it to the choppers, a group of three guys will arrive from the way they came, but they are way too late to stop our protagonists from being evacuated at last. So, let's add up these numbers, shall we? And here it is. So we got 68 hoodies, 62 balaclavas, 89 old gas masks, 133 new gas masks, 52 scientific suits, 78 rat suits, 129 exoskeletons, and 151 corpses. And here are the grand totals. Are you surprised by the results, or did you expect such numbers? Be sure to tell me in the comments below. As for now, I thank you for watching, stalkers, and goodbye.